We are the Matea Group of Keller Williams Realty. We enjoy the diverse community that we serve and the lifestyle that Maine has to offer. We'll be talking all things real estate and Maine. Welcome to the Maine Real Estate Show. Hey, welcome to the Maine Real Estate Show. I'm your host, Jeff Matea of the Matea Group at Keller Williams Realty. I'm joined by my co-host, Harrison Smith. Welcome, Harrison. Thanks, Jeff. How are we doing? Good. Very good. Nice. Uh, starting to warm up outside. So we know the spring market is here and uh, soon it'll be summer and time's flying by. Yeah, it's beautiful out there. And I love this time of year when things start to get green again and right. it feels like the, we're through the winter. Right. Yeah. And you have those sellers that say, well, I was waiting until, you know, my grass became green or it could rake up all the mess and that brown was going away. Now it seems like it's it's here. We're good. And uh, the market's starting to heat up. Yep. More inventory is coming on, yet it's getting gobbled up quickly as yep. we said in our last episode, you know, the listings were down yet inventory starting to creep up. It's, it's really, but that demand is there. Mm -hmm. Interest rates, you know, they're hovering all over the place. I, I know someone that got uh, pre-qualified for uh, five and a half uh, the other day, Wow, you know, shorter term uh, loan, sure. but at the same time, I mean, nice to see a five and that leading that number yep. when we saw a lot of sixes and sevens. So uh, really optimistic when the num new numbers come out that we'll, we'll see some, um, you know, getting towards the lower six, maybe even upper fives the next 30, 60 days. I'm yeah. pretty bullish on that. Yeah. All signs are pointing to, we should have a pretty good spring and summer here. You know, certainly as you mentioned, inventory trends are certainly pointing up. Um, rates are seem to be trending back down a little bit. All indications are they should continue to go that way, but it's always a wild guess. Anything to make that change. But I, and I, I, I think the main point of our show last week is that we are seeing some statewide trends about price reductions and you know, maybe fewer multiple offers and low, lower sale prices. We're not necessarily seeing that in Southern Maine. It's still a very strong seller's market, but with rates coming back down, affordability is coming back. We should see a good summer. Yeah. I mean, we had a, a property in Topsom. We had a property in Wyndham that had 20 to 50 showings, uh, let alone, you know, about ends up being like 10 to 15% of those showings turn into an offer um, is what I've seen. It kind of correlates to that where it's, you know, people either figure that they are can't be competitive. Uh, you know, I don't know if that's like a, a price point. I'd love to get in some of those buyers' minds that say, well, hey, a house listed for 400000 Are they the folks that could afford four fifty, five hundred 500 are looking down, which I think that that tends to be the case. Sure. And then they know, well, we can bid it up. Whereas that person that can only afford 400 maybe 425 looks and then says, wow, 50 showings. They're probably going to go well over asking. We probably pump the brakes and let's just keep looking. Some agents do encourage their folks, and like I would too, it doesn't hurt to make an offer because you never know. And we had a couple of examples even in the last 30 days where had a two subject to sales. Yes, our folks had a considerable down payment or were full cash, but they had a subject to sale and they won. And the other agent told me it wasn't necessarily that we had the higher asking price. Mm -hmm. We had all other terms who were very in line and were better than everyone's. And they liked that the certainty of closing. Yep. So hint, hint, no inspections perhaps, or very limited um, is, is what's going to put you, set you apart. Strong earnest money and close date. So if you can close sooner, give sellers some options, maybe to rent back. It, it's really that certainty of close and best terms doesn't necessarily mean best price. And yes. I want people to keep that in mind that you know, people kind of sometimes blow out of the water uh, a price and you're like, get caught in, wow, but I could get this or this. Well, but what does this other offer over here say with every other term in line or a little bit better? And well, yeah, this person's likely to close, likely to appraise, likely to not beat us up on inspections. And we go to the one that may not have the best price at the end of the day. Yeah. The sellers want the certainty, not necessarily the greed of, I can make another you know, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars has not always been the final outcome. Yeah, and we've talked about this a lot lately, especially with within our own team. Is you know the terms really do matter. You know, because right now oh, sellers are in the same boat as buyers, which is it's not a lot of inventory. I, I have one shot to get that next house. I need to know my house is going to sell, and that certainty to sell, as you pointed out, in yep. some cases is worth more to them to have that confidence to move forward than the price. Well, and we're in, we're in a skill market, right? So totally. the agent, the agent communication is important. Agent to lender, lender to the other agent and clients and third parties that will be involved uh, plays a big role in this. So you have agents that may not have necessarily done a, a lot of transactions need to step up their game in the communication realm so that they can stand out from the crowd. So if your agent's not communicating effectively to you, 
how are they communicating to other agents? How are they communicating? Right. Exactly. So that message that gets delivered, like, here's my offer. And, you know, so I call the other agent, I call their lender, have their lender call the listing agent, et cetera. Um, if that's not happening, it's an uphill battle. Um, what do, how else do you stand out? Your, your agent's emailing over an offer and then maybe hopefully even texting or calling. If they don't do that, I mean, I, I've received offers and not heard anything from the other agent. I've had to call them to just check in. Hey, you know, I got a question about this, well, this term communication wins. And I have many examples of that where I definitely know. And the other agent, even in the process, and then at the closing reminded my client, you know, you got this because of this situation or this relationship or th this communication that happens when the offer was presented and not necessarily like you didn't have the highest price. You didn't have all the best terms, but we knew that Jeff was going to get it closed or we knew because of this term or that term, how you presented it made ourselves more comfortable when we presented all offers to our seller. And then that decision was a little easier. So, you know, you get 20, 30 offers. How the oh, yeah. hell are you supposed to, you, do you narrow it on price? Yeah. You probably start there or at least give five yeah. out of the 20, 25, uh, a chance. Yeah. You need something then, to filter with out of the gate. And then you look and say, okay, well, when do we close? What's the financing terms? Do they have inspections? How much is earnest money? And I've started to bump up earnest money as a key factor, because I think if someone's going to put 10,000 plus on the line and I've seen offers come in 30, $50,000 earnest money. Wow. When there's still people making offers, thousand, $2,000 yeah. on 400, $500,000 house, even explaining that. Cause again, remember we guide and advise. So we advise and tell our clients, here's, here's the situation. They ultimately decide they're the ones in the driver's seat, but to explain to someone, who do you, who do you feel more comfortable with the person putting a thousand dollars down or a thousand dollar earnest money or 10,000, because you even see it when they do, you know, 5%, 20% down, mm -hmm. there's different facets there that in factors that people say, oh, this person's likely to if they have inspections, the person that has 20% down is likely to ask for less or have the financial ability if something comes up to be able to address it. Yep. No, and it's, it's absolutely true. And that's actually a, that's a great teaser for the fact that um, next week we will be having our next state of the market show. Um, we will have one of our preferred lenders on here to talk about interest rates right. and what they're doing to help borrowers be competitive. We'll have Jeff dive into what the market's like for buyers, for sellers, what things are working, what are the tips and tricks that we see being successful right now in the market. And I actually thought this week could be a good chance to take maybe one step back from that, you know, leading up mm. to the state of the market show to talk a little bit about the process. Right. This is the time of the year. And you mentioned it. A lot of buyers are thinking about buying. A lot of sellers are thinking about selling. And we always get the first question of, well, how does this work? What do I do? So sure. let's, um, let's start off on the buyer side, Jeff. So you've yeah. worked with a few buyers over the, over the years. Yeah. Um, if, so if somebody's sitting, somebody sitting at home right now thinking, you know, this is the year I'm going to buy that house or somebody that's currently in a house that knows I need to make that next step. If somebody's thinking that, what's the first step? Yeah. Well, the most important is to understand what you can afford. Uh, you know, starting out, I knew, you know, I would take any buyer out. This is, you know, 18 years mm -hmm. ago. Buyer says, well, I want to see that house. And we didn't really pre-qualify. We just said, right, let's go jump in our car, go unlock the door, show them the house, see if they like it. Well, then a couple of those instances, person's like, well, I don't know, it's kind of out of my price range. Well, what do you mean? I thought that you called on a house that you could afford. And so you have to, you actually have to pedal back a little bit and help them understand. So the best step to take is to get pre-qualified, pre-approved, what, you know, different lenders call them differently. Yeah. So we'll call it pre-qualification. So that's where you uh, speak with a local lender over the phone or in person. We like local because then even if over the phone you have a question, you can actually meet them face to face at their at their desk at the bank or at their their mortgage office and you provide them with your financial uh information so they it's all about debt to income so they're going to pull your credit so it's a soft pull in most cases they take your social security number and pull credit to see well what credit do you have outstanding what's been offered to you mm -hmm. and how are you doing in paying that down are you timely are you you know paying credit cards off in full do you you know or do you carry a big balance etc um, and so they take that as well as your income. So you're stating what you make, where income's coming from, what's your employment uh, situation look like. So they like to see that consistency. Sure. And from there, they give you based on your debt to income ratio, what additional debt, meaning a home loan, can you take on such that you could afford the, this, this payment right. in addition to the others that you have. And, you know, some situations, maybe your credit score might be not be great. So they might encourage you to 
work with your other uh, lines of credit or, you know, um, you know, debt to uh, get that, improve that. So you might sure. need some time. So it's good to start there. They'll deliver to you a, an amount. So let's just arbitrarily say 300,000. So uh, John Doe is pre-qualified now for 300,000 based on the information that was given. And then they'll say, well, right, monthly payment will all be based on taxes and insurance in that area. So we don't know quite what that will be yet until you actually identify a property. Sure. But at least now, you know, I can afford 300,000. That's the max. Probably want to look a little bit under that. Also knowing offers going above asking. Right. So we'll work off of 300,000. The next step will then to be talking to a real estate agent or interviewing agents that, you know, um, work the area that you would like to look in. Sure. From there. Um, you're going to sit down with them, and this could also be on the phone or in, in person, is to go through their criteria. What do you absolutely need in a home? What would you? What would be nice to have or liked? Sure. To, and, and what are some of the wants and needs? And kind of massage that into, well, here's now how we will look for a home. So you'll set up a search, your realtor will set up a search, and you'll both be you know perusing MLS, Zillow, Redfin, all the you know crazy websites, and seeing stuff as they come on, and then calling your agent to say, I'd like to see this property. Yep. And then in the meantime, as a buyer's agent, you're also looking for things that might be off market right. or looking at maybe areas they targeted to see if you can find a home for them. It's not just them sure. sitting back on Zillow and, and you waiting for them to call. Yeah. it's. I mean, it's a juggling act, right? There's going to be t times where um, folks who are desperately in need of a home will have their phone and it'll buzz every time a, a new alert comes that that tells them. So they've got email texts. You mean, right? Our our society now is instant mm -hmm. gratification, instant information and that need. Um, so there's folks that may even see it before a, their real estate agent sees it. Sure. And that's quite okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Because yeah. um, also understand like they're looking specifically for them. A real estate agent may be looking for 20, 30 different buyers at any given sure. point in time. Um, so when that meets the criteria, uh, you find a home, you alert your real estate agent. So the buyer agent that you're working with that you'd like to see that home and what is your schedule look like? When can you see that home? Because now know that limited availability for showings or there's an offer deadline, et cetera. And that real estate agent can then send you the disclosures, dig up some stuff about the, you know, from the assessment, you know, when's the, what happened when they last purchased it, you know, has photos online changed, you know, what do they do for upgrades? So then you can back into, okay, we really like that. Or do we have questions about the area? How close is it to X, Y, and Z? We would encourage if the time um, is suitable for, you know, making an offer and getting it uh, in to see the home is to try to do a drive by as well, um, because it's important that, you know, you don't want to waste your time or the, your realtor's time or even the listing agent or the seller is if you're, you know, setting up a showing and then you go to it and it's like, well, it's just, it's too far from work or we didn't know that there was something across the street that we didn't like or it's tough to back out of the driveway because it's a busy road or there's a dump across the street whatever sure um just to save that time so that you're not taking up someone else that you know could see that house but also again you'd rather spend your time finding a house that works and meets all the criteria rather than just going to see a house to see a house um, i think you know that'd be very helpful is to limit that and to save time yeah so so during a showing as the as their agent, what are, what are you trying to help point out? What are you trying to help them see as they're walking through? Right, right. So from, you know, years of experience, I can read signs of what they like and don't like by their body language, ask them, encourage them to talk out loud. Mm. Uh, of course, you know, be, be cognizant that uh, now we have, you know, nanny cams, um, mm. ring doorbells, there's cameras inside homes and, and those need to be disclosed. But, uh, you know, just, again, poker face, if you know that that stuff's there. Um, at the same time, it's watching their mannerisms seeing how they react, but also asking questions and, or stating like, you know, geez, this is, you know, really now it's nice uh, layout. Um, I could see you guys, you know, knowing because I've already had that interview about their criteria, they like to cook or they like to entertain, you know, this is a great open layout so that, you know, you can be sitting over there and cooking here. And then your friends are, you know, having dinner over there while you're, you know, got the game on or whatnot. Um, or, you know, they have family and, uh, you know, they like to have uh, the holidays there. Uh, or you got a you know big backyard for the dog, uh, oh, or yeah. the kids to run around, or whatever it is that that meet their criteria, and then just talking out loud, like making sure that they understand that I'm I'm uh, on their side. So we're looking at stuff, and I'm also pointing out, not trying to dissuade, but also saying like you know just want to make sure that you notice that crack over there. You know, it's showing that we're not just trying to sell like this is the perfect sure. You know, it's still a, a used uh, used item. 
Uh, but then pointing out like, well, we would have this inspected or right in the disclosure, it said this, so not to worry. However, just keep that in mind, or you might want to budget down the road for X, Y, and Z. Um, but this is overall a very sound home built in, you know, what year. Um, and then just paying attention to that disclosure, the amenities that really uh, stand out and what they're looking for. And then just understanding, does it meet their needs? And you get that, you kind of get that buying indication early on. Mm -hmm. They want to see the house a little bit more. Sure. Um, otherwise, it's like, oh, let's move on to the next one. Okay. Yeah. So go to the showing. The house is a yeah. perfect fit for what they're looking for. Next step would be to write the offer. What's that offer right. process like? Yeah. I mean, it really only takes um, us, you know, just a few minutes to type that up. So it's just understanding from the get-go. Okay. Well, you know, what what are they, how are they financially? So we need to know their, their loan. We need to know what could they um, do without with that escrow earnest money that I mentioned before. So I like to see five to $10,000. You know, I want to come in saying we're strong, we're earnest about this. Yep. And so that amount of money, I remind them is you'd write a check today that when your offer is accepted, that is deposited in a trust account that remains your money. You'd get it back if you had to get, a, get out on inspections or the house didn't appraise or for some other reason, it's, it's just to keep you from skipping town. It's to hold your spot such that as long as you perform, you can get it back. You perform forward, it goes towards that deposit that you're uh, putting towards the final purchase price of the home. So it remains your money unless you were to slip up and just skip town, disappear, didn't get back to the seller, um, and rightfully so, right? It then could revert to them um, because you, you kind of wasted their um, time and opportunity to sell because there might've been someone else yep. um, waiting for that. So um, that is part of the offer. Um, we also walk through, you know, their risk uh, tolerance to inspections. So we mentioned before, when we're going through a property, we assess that it's in good working order and, hey, you know, look at the big stuff. The big ticket items are the, you know, the roof, heating, electrical plumbing, um, you know, pay, pay attention to the windows that could add up. You know, so a lot of the um, bigger dollar items, just making sure that that's in the, you know, uh, they're suitable to their needs. Uh, if there's other items that are more cosmetic, like, Hey, you're going to be painting anyway. So it doesn't matter that that room's pink and purple and yeah, turquoise and, you know, the like, or, you know, floors are scratched a little bit is, you know, give them an idea. Hey, this is easy to do. But again, um, you know, John and Mary, you, you can pick away at a room if this is priced to your liking. And then we would obviously visit that. So we've got most of our terms. We visit pricing. So it's been on the market X number of days. This is what it's listed at. Uh, this is what area homes are selling for. So you either right need to come in strong, maybe even stronger. Um, and where do we see the market heading? And just give them an idea that uh, it's in a great neighborhood. Scarborough, South Portland, Cape Elizabeth will hold their value. Um, you know, excellent um, amenities in the area. So people feel comfortable making that suitable offer. And then just know, right, if it's subject to inspection, well, you want to make a strong enough offer that your offer gets accepted. If you're, if you know that you're maybe the only offer, uh, maybe you can come off of asking and then just know, like, try to do your negotiation now. Yes, there might be room on inspection, but if you just kind of do everything right now and could upset the seller or you come in high hoping, well, I'm going to hit them on the inspection, they don't necessarily have to agree to the inspection. The inspection might be just for informational purposes only. They'll allow you to do it, but they don't plan to negotiate. So you've got to come in with whatever your strategy is. And that's what we would talk over. So yes, I said it takes about five minutes. It's five minutes of actually typing it up. We could talk 15, 20 minutes to a half hour about strategy and do, you know, depending on the situation, are we in a multiple? Are we in just, we know we're the only offer right now. How do we respond from there? And then just, again, setting the expectations, the communication, and how will we communicate to the other, other broker? to make sure that our story is told to the seller such that they consider us strongly for selling their home to us. Yeah. And as you say all the time, you know, we guide, advise, they decide. So yep. you're going to recommend the strategy you think makes the most sense. Yeah. But if this, if the buyer doesn't like a part of that or isn't comfortable with a part of that, it's not that they have to do it your way. You're just trying sure. to recommend what they should do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like we say, it's like, this is the first time they've done that in, in a few years. We've sold 325 homes every year for the past like three or four years. So we do this every day. Um, they might do it every three to four years or more. Yep. All right. So going to contract, you know, congratulations all around. You're under contract, which I know in this market, that's, that's a big deal right now. Yeah. Um, they do have an inspection though. So in that case, they're going to, they're, they're going to hire an inspector. Right. And they're going to pay for that inspection when it happens. 
What's that process look like? Yep. Yep. So we uh, recommend uh, a number of inspectors so that they can choose from work on, you know, if there's a specific type of home or style, some have a specialty or offer add-ons that they one stop shop or have to sub out like a septic inspection or et cetera. Um, so they are right in the contract. It reads that the buyer at their sole discretion hires and pays for the, the inspector. So to limit that liability, um, from there, uh, we meet the home inspector and the buyer at the property. Um, typically the seller is not present so that you can walk through the home actively, like walk through, talk out loud, comments, recommendations, et cetera. And the home inspector is going room by room, looking at, you know, the, the walls, the electrical, the ceiling, you know, leaks, um, you know, the mechanicals, most importantly, the plumbing, electrical, heating, roof coverage, uh, chimney, flashing, fireplaces, uh, making sure that windows open and close, tilt in if they go up, but they slam down, you know, the danger of that and marking even stuff that's five, $10 repair at Home Depot. And you can do, you know, weekend warriors can fix it so that you're compiling a list. And some of these reports are several pages long, but they'll summarize and talk out loud. And ones with a great bedside manner are saying, well, right, um, you know, your electrical outlets are, are not GFCI protected in the kitchen and bathroom in the basement garage. Uh, this is an easy fix. Uh, electrician would know more, but uh, per outlet, it's about this. Or, you know, this is an easy fix, just more health and safety related, um, but just making them aware. And then the more serious stuff, just making that um, pertinent that they know in the summary to watch for this, that you want to get this addressed or fixed or ask for money uh, from the seller to fix it at another point in time, or this needs to be done prior to moving into this home. You really should pay close attention to A, B, and C. The other stuff can be budgeted at a later date, or, you know, you've got such and such time left on your roof. Heating system looks good, but service it every year because it, you know, will last a lot longer. Um, but you probably have, you know, five to 10 years left of that and they'll walk you through how long things should last as long as you take good care of them and just give you a, a, you know, a rough idea from that. And you get a report usually the next day uh, so that you can go over that with your agent as to what's most important to you to make this your new home such that these items are either serviced or at least known about to budget for in the future. Yeah. So that report kind of becomes the story of the house you're buying. This That's is right. The, yep. This is the exact condition of it right now. Here's the things to be aware of. Here's yep. what looks good. Here's what need, may need some attention. Um, and then they're paying for this out of pocket at the time it happens. I know that Correct. there can be a wide range of costs there. Yeah. Kind of yeah. what is a rough average for somebody to expect? Um, anywhere from like, you know, I've seen three fifty to $500 uh, for a general home inspection, depending on the size of the home. Sometimes the area, how hard, uh, how far the uh, inspector may have to drive to get sure. there as well. Um, and then again, more size, the, the size, age of the home um, has a lot to do with it um, based on what the, you know, they might have a little bit more to handle that makes that you know, visit to the property longer um, sure. generally is what drives that price. Sure. And then some of the common add-ons would be things like radon testing, sewer scopes, uh, septic testing, water testing. Water test. Sort of right. Right. Yep. Exactly. Okay, um, and then, yeah, from there. So you get that report and where do you go from there is to digest that. Is this still the right house? So you could walk away. You could accept the house as is, mm -hmm. or you could renegotiate. So that's where you fill out with your agent, uh, what's called an investigation contingency amendment that says, Either you're walking away, terminating. Um, we need some more time to to investigate a key area, uh, or we would like to um, have a modification of this agreement. We would like X, Y, and Z replaced. Um, X, Y, and Z replaced, and uh, a, a credit towards closing costs to help us fix that another time. Right. Um, or right, go fix this. Um, otherwise, we we walk away. Okay, yep. so. Get through the get through the inspection, and you know any maybe the inspection's great, and you breeze right through, or maybe you've got some things you negotiate. Mm -hmm. Next step is the appraisal. So how's the right. appraisal work? Yep. Uh, so an appraiser context. So appraiser is hired on behalf of the buyer's lending institution. That's a the third party that then goes in and needs to confirm visually that the property is in fact worth the amount that's going to be lended. So uh, an appraiser is taking measurements, taking photos, going to public record, getting the assessment, matching all of that to make sure it's, you know, permitted rooms and et cetera, um, size of septic, you know, everything that qualifies for the property, taking measurements uh, to then go back and use comparables to make sure, in fact, that the home is worth what it's going to sell for, because that drives what the lender will lend to the borrower, the buyer. 
Uh, so at the end of the day, right, then the appraiser is the kind of the final word on how oh, the home is worth 300,000 or it's not 290,000. We're under for 300,000. If you are, you come in at, at or above value, we're good. The buyer gets that saying lender said, or your appraiser told the lender came in at value or above you're good. Loan's going to get approved given, you know, right. We've got employment verification and some other things to kind of finish up as we get closer to closing. Sure. Uh, if it under appraises, uh, that's when we have to kind of revisit, go back to the drawing board a little bit. So let's just hypothetically say 300,000 is sales price. It appraises for 290. The bank says, well, can only lend on the loan to value that we said at 290, not 300 now. So a couple options or a few. A buyer can make up the difference, $10,000, by bringing more cash to closing. Mm -hmm. Two, the buyer can walk away. I can no longer get the loan that I had said I would get per the purchasing of the sale agreement. Or three, renegotiate with a seller saying, well, your home is now, the, the home I agree to buy for 300 is actually only worth 290 per my lender. Can we meet, make up some difference? Either the seller could sell for 290 or somewhere in between 290 and 300. The seller could say, I'm not taking a penny less than 300. The buyer could say, I can't pay more than 290. And we are at a stalemate. However, somewhere in, in between, we could meet to say, right, well, we'll forgive. Yeah, you were going to leave the riding lawnmower or whatever. We'll, um, we won't do that and we'll pay $294, uh, whatever, you know, sure. some sort of, you know, compromise, shall we say. Perfect. So you get, get through that and now you're off to closing. So closing day, which is usually the most exciting day of the whole process. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, or 24 hours before is the final oh, walkthrough. Sure. Some day of closing walkthroughs happen where, right. So in the meantime, between appraisal and the closing, uh, the lender is asking the buyer to continue to provide some documents, you know, uh, W2s are probably already in, but bank statements, just reaffirming that they are still financially, uh, you know, on board and, and can, um, satisfy the requirements of the lender. And then there's an employment verification. Of course, we want to know where that money was coming from when they said that W2 or 1099, are they still performing that work? Um, they hopefully didn't lose their job or take out another line of credit. So don't go buy another car. Don't go shopping for your um, um, furniture. Even those um, Home Depot cards or, you know, Way, you know, I don't know if Wayfair even does this, but, you know, you take out a line of credit, no money down, you know, yeah. 18 months free interest, whatever the heck you want to call it. Because understanding you're taking on new debt that could change your uh, debt to income ratio so that, you know, your lender will hopefully remind you and slap you upside the head to not do this until you close. Um, after closing, do whatever the heck you want, but get to closing so we don't change our financial situation. So we mentioned final walkthrough. Uh, legally, per the purchase and sale agreement, a final walkthrough can occur up to 24 hours prior to closing with your agent. So you and your agent as the buyer are going into the home to just make sure that is it in uh, broom clean condition, free and clear of all debris and in um, acceptable condition per what you saw when you agreed to buy it. You know, they didn't ding a hole in the wall or break a window or remove an item. Um, had sometimes uh, appliances get changed out or things not be there when uh, they had said. So, you know, typically you want to write all that personal property uh, into a contract like your appliances. Uh, sometimes there's a squabble over well, right? Is a is a shed or a TV mount or there's different, you know, surround sound. I mean, all the stuff these days. I mean, there's so many different things like there's... Ring doorbells and Ring thermostat, Nest thermostats that um, are, you know, some of those cost a fair amount of money. Mm -hmm. So switching them out with something else, it's like, well, was that what I agreed to when I saw it in the house? And you know, you put the twenty dollar one on, and that's definitely one hundred fifty to two hundred dollar. It starts to you know give you a bad taste in the mouth, like what else is going to happen here? Um, so that's why you do a final walkthrough. Um, we've had also clients who have um, walked into homes and the seller left debris and, you know, well, I thought you wanted all the paint and uh, leftover tile and the flooring. And, you know, that's cool and all sometimes, but then there are people that have left trash uh, bins and sometimes trash in the bins. And it's like, you know, some stuff where you just kind of, you don't want to, um, inherit someone else's problems and issues or like, you know, we're going to have enough moving and packing stuff that we've got to dispose of. And we've just got everybody else's like trash that they didn't have enough room to put in the, uh, 
the containers that you wheel up yeah, to the side the of the road. Couch, they didn't want to move. Yeah, or <laughs> right, or they didn't mow the lawn for you know a month and a half because since we went under contract, they haven't mowed the lawn, and you you know come in and like yeah, one more thing you have to do. So yeah, yeah. you know, uh, it comes down to communication and setting expectations, and just being in communication with the other agent so that you know that you're not going to get to hey two hours to closing, and oh crap, and we've gotten some of those calls where hey a seller just they got busy, they misunderstood, they so many things going on that, well, I think just leaving it by the side of the driveway, it'll be fine. And, you know, right. You got that couch and, mm-hmm. you know, the dump guy, you know, don't know what they charge, but right. They, it's a, it's a fee if you get a and, a, and a buyer has inherited a cost that, you know, come on, I if you know, I agreed to buy your house and I've got to pay five, six, $700 to dispose of some junk that you had 30 to 45 days to take yeah. care of. Um, and so it happens. Um, we laugh it off sometimes, but it, it can sour um, the final result. You know, you've had like five star experience all the way to here, and what do they remember? Uh, the, the the seller who left fifteen gallons of paint and all the crap that's like frozen and like lumber. You know, um, that's just you know sitting by the side of their garage. That well, I, you know, I meant you know, I knew it was there, but I did. Yeah, I mean, they can burn it or set it by the side of the road. I mean, yeah. there's excuses, and then there's like, well, just get it done. We agree to the contract free and clear of all debris and in the uh, acceptable condition as when they purchase the home or agreed to purchase the home at that time. Excellent. So yeah. walk through, walk through complete. Everything's good. And you're off to the, off to the closing. Date. Yeah. You head to the closing and uh, your lender title company will remind you that uh, you need to make sure that you have a photo ID. So um, acceptable government issued ID, driver's license, passport, um, whatnot, and a uh, cashier's check. So certified funds, not a personal check. Mm-hmm certified funds that knows that it's as good as cash today that they'll accept made out to the title company to settle the purchase of your home the rest if it's a loan will be um you know wired in from the lender to to close out um and then you'll write signed documents that say i'm taking out a loan if i pay i stay if i don't i won't and all of this uh, you know goes through in about a half hour to an hour um the seller signs the deed uh transferring the property to you as the new owner uh, you get the keys, uh, hopefully with a smile, handshake, and uh, the house is now yours. You can take possession. So that's also why a home um, walkthrough, a final walkthrough happens 24 hours or even just a few hours prior to closing is those keys are yours. You're set to move in as soon as the closing happens. Uh, the, the seller shouldn't be have any need to go back to that home. The, the property is now yours. So that's why we don't want you to get left with uh, you know a trailer full of junk or no trailer, just junk in the yard, tires. And um, we've seen that. Um, all kinds of stuff in the yard. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so that's one of the reasons why that happens. So that's, it's your property. You can move right in and, um, you know, just make sure you have everything that you need. Movers are all lined up to, uh, to get started and yeah. move in from there. Make sure you've got your utilities turned on. Everything's ready right. to go. And yeah. That's a big one too. Talking to make sure that those are closed out, that the, uh, the new owner has um, them set up in their name. Yeah. And uh, I know that to a lot of people, we've just been through a lot of stuff, but keep yeah. in mind, you know, it, when you're working with an agent like Jeff or the, or a team like the Matei group, right. you're going to have people that are constantly reminding you about, you know, this, this is coming up, make sure we do this, don't right. forget about that. You know, this is not something you've got to memorize. You're no. going to have somebody really kind of coaching you through the process. Right. Right. Yeah. And we have a team of experts and specialists that help you. So it's like one step at a time we say, yeah, we want to make sure that you, we set the expectations so you know what's next. What's the next step so that we're calling you, you're not calling us saying, well, what do I do now? Yep. Um, we want to make sure that that communication is clear uh, and concise. So it's, well, you know, on to home inspection. Well, next will be the appraisal. Nothing to worry about. Just keep getting all the paperwork yep. that your lender asks for. You know, don't go buy a new car. Don't go take out any lines of credit um, and then just take it from there. Okay. So that's the buyer side. That's right. And really for the seller side, once you go into contract, it's the same process. You're just on the other side of it waiting for right. the results. But on the seller side, if somebody's thinking right now, I might want to sell my house, what is the first step for them? Yeah. I mean, the biggest one is to have someone out to your property or get into discussion about, well, where do you go when the home sells? Um, so that that's the biggest one right now is, you know, folks are concerned about, well, what do I, where will I go? What will I do? And know that we've never had a client go homeless in 18 years. So the, the biggest thing is to just get the ball rolling is to show your home to your agent so that they can assess not just the price. I mean, everybody starts with like, well, what's my home worth and what would it sell for in the market? Well, obviously we want to come by to give you an assessment. 
um, of what we think, given the comparables, the data out there to guide you, advise you. If your home wants to go on the market the next week, here's likely what it would list for. Here's what it likely would sell for. And I think that's important. There's a number of agents as well as sellers out there that think, well, the number I give you, like, that's that the definite. Well, not necessarily. The market's ever changing. Mm -hmm. And we're also seeing the auction effects. So if you actually list it a little bit lower, uh, you, you're likely to get more people through the home such that it sells for higher and I'm going to net you more money. So at the end of the day, it's, it's about getting you the best terms and conditions uh, to get you the most amount of money in the least amount of time. Isn't that what you would expect? And they say yes. At the same time, it's going over to your home. Um, and I actually just had a call before we went on the air is we're going by and assessing, well, you know, I'm worried about the, uh, the, the nag in the carpet or the, you know, I dinged the wall the other day or I we scratched the floors, you know, do I need to repair this or that? You know, my bath, oh, we always meant to paint the bathroom or do, redo the countertops. Should we do that? And the biggest thing right now, I mean, even before the market went crazy, it was, you know, honestly, Harrison, the dollar for dollar return, you don't see much of that unless it's like landscaping, painting, many of the other items, you don't see that upside. Mm -hmm. And a lot of buyers are going to come into your home and do something entirely different. So if you're just doing that to kind of make it clean and crisp and presentable, I get it. Let's do that. Let's do the real minor cosmetics. Sure. But every house is different. So again, have the real estate agent over to assess and help you. Um, but at the end of the day, more often than not, we're advising. I don't think you need to do that, especially in this market. One, a buyer is going to look past some imperfections as long as they're not major. And then two, they're going to put their own spin, leave them something to do. I mean, unless it's brand sure. new construction, yeah. they're going to want to paint or retile or just do something that's a little different that makes it their own. Yeah, it would make sense. We all like to come in and personalize yeah. it to a certain extent, right. whether it's a different color palette or there's always some change you make. It's very rare we see a client buy a house and leave it exactly as it is yeah. for the long term. There's always changes that come. But I'll tell you, there is a premium paid in this market, I think in any market, but especially in this one, where a seller that has pride of ownership and can show that they take good care outside and inside, buyers are wowed by that. And that also causes you, if you think of it from a psychological impact, mm -hmm. A buyer comes in and thinks, wow, they really take great care of their home. You know, you can eat off the floor in the garage. It's that pristine. Yep. They likely take care of their plumbing, their heating, their electric. Like sure. they, they didn't skimp. They didn't cut corners. They didn't just, you know, BS this. It's they, they really care about their home. So I don't really have to worry as much. And maybe they, it causes a buyer to think, well, maybe I don't need to get an inspection. Or if I'm going to get an inspection, it's really just like I want to check the septic and well. I don't, or maybe I want to test for radon if the yeah, health concern, mm. but otherwise it's everything else is what, what am I doing? I mean, maybe you ask, you know, did they have an inspection when they bought their home that they could share or did they get it pre-inspected? We even see that. Um, it's just that comfort level. So as a seller, the better presentation, but you don't need to go over the top. And sometimes even going over the top could be like, well, will they hide in something like it smell like so many like fragrances and, you know, are we like covering up something? So. You know, to each their own, to every property is different. Um, it's just like touching up. So we just had a client go through and paint all their trim and bathe board where normally like that's dusty and gets scratched oh, yeah. or like pets have scratched the windows. And I can tell you, cause we sold two um, homes in a particular neighborhood. The one that did like the minimal to the one that just, wow. Yep. Wow. Sold for a lot more money. Mm. It was, it's pretty wild just to think that care to the, well, I just want to sell. I'm, yeah. I'm okay with this number. Well, if they put in a little bit more time and effort, it might've meant more money and very little, very little cost, like paint and some Clorox and just like, you know, the magic eraser, like stuff oh, like yeah. that going around on every door and just making sure that the, the marks from your hands and the grease and stuff is gone. And then just having it smell and getting it professionally cleaned night and day to get your home sold. Um, and we see that too with like people who have pets. So I would give that sure. some consideration is you're so used to being in your home day in and day out that you don't necessarily like if you're brand new to walking in a home, you're going to pick up on some of the stuff that's like, well, you know, oh yeah, I didn't sure. realize that when, oh yeah, I forgot about that little hole in the wall over there or, you know, the door, loose doorknob. So, I mean, I could go on and on about this, but again, it might help to have 
a third party, your real estate agent, come in and just, you know, be open and honest about what you might need to do. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so you, you go through this whole process and, and you've got a client that says, okay, like, we, we definitely want to sell. We agree, yep. we agree with what you're thinking about how to approach this. Mm -hmm. um, what's next? Yeah, so we go over the paperwork. We uh, guide and advise on the price. Uh, when we're in agreement, we go through the paperwork. So there's an ex exclusive right to sell listing agreement, which then says you're hiring the agency and myself as your appointed agent or your agent as your appointed agent to represent you in the sale of your home, how you're getting paid, and then, you know, allowing me to put a lockbox, a key, uh, take interior, exterior photos of your home. So they're then saying, yep, handshake, sign documentation. You're the, you're the real estate agent for this home. Uh, from there, we call and schedule photos. So give them, maybe they need some time to pretty up the home or maybe it's ready to go. Uh, our photographer, professional photographer would then come in uh, with us and um, either has already moved things around. Maybe the seller's perfect with design. Uh, or we can move an item or two out of the way, like mirrors. Sometimes you don't want to see someone in the reflection of a mirror. Um, so some mirrors can get moved or some pieces um, to just make a room more open. Sure. So we talk about declutter and depersonalizing. We want people to come into the home, not trip over things or, mm -hmm. you know, want them to be able to see what lovely um, space and, you know, the, you know, the um, amenities of your home and not be focused on your belongings or pictures of you and you know, wonder if they know you or getting distracted because I want them to leave the home thinking that's their home or they're walking in thinking I can picture myself here. Not is that, no, I think I've seen like where, I wonder where they work or I think I know them somewhere. Or look them up on Facebook and, oh yeah, that guy knows that guy and her and blah, blah, blah. Um, so going from that, uh, those photos then, you know, in 24 to 48 hours, typically we have them back in 24 hours or less. We can go live on the market. I don't typically like to go on the market on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It doesn't give enough time to be in the uh, syndication out to the websites sure. um, to kind of aggregate all that information and get people to, you know, you know, your, your um, home buyers are looking, but they're, well, I want to just enjoy the weekend. Let's, unless it's crazy, but I'd like to list on Tuesday through Thursday, typically. Yeah. Uh, people are less preoccupied with other things yep. and they have enough time to then do some research, think about it, call their broker, speak with their spouse, significant other to then say, yeah, let's set up a showing. Let's get, let's get on board and go. Um, so we generally list Tuesday to Thursday, maybe a open house on the weekends, all offers due Monday, Tuesday uh, to go from there. Okay. So on the market, signs up, pictures are great, ready to go. People want to come see the house. Now you're looking at open houses and showings. Right. You know, from, from the seller, they're coming to see your house. They obviously don't want you in it. Right. Um, so what's that process like? You know, how much notice should, should they expect? What are they expected to do? How sure. long should they be gone? Yeah. I mean, we tend to give 24 hours notice uh, depending on the situation, right? They've, you know, got busy day. They've got kids. They've got dogs, et cetera. Something, you know, th themselves or them and something else needs to be removed from the home for showing. Because, um, yes, you don't want to be home or present when a buyer's coming through your home and talking about what they like or what they don't like about your property. And then they also feel less comfortable if someone else is there kind of hovering over the shoulder, um, looking at or listening in to what they're, what they're thinking about your home. Um, so uh, showings normally 15 to 30 minutes. Some larger homes, obviously, it could take more time. So our sellers are asked to be out of the home for that period of time per showing. Okay. In a crazy market, we're also blocking and saying, well, right, if you're, home, if you're at work all day from 9 to 5, uh, could we just have it like go and show? Have your house ready. We'll leave all the lights on. And in 15 minute increments, we can show it all day Friday, Saturday. Could you leave and go to another home or, you know, friend's house or just go, you know, go, go hang somewhere for uh, most of the day um, so that we can not, it, it's, it's more about convenience and inconvenience, right? Mm -hmm. We want to have a buyer be able to just, I want to see it at two and go, not, well, I want to see it at two. And then the seller says, well, you can't do two because that's like, nah, this is going on. And like, can you do three? And yeah. we need to keep it easy and convenient. I get it. There's folks, kids might have to take a nap. Um, can't get the dogs out for certain, like there's a lot of things yeah. and we'll, we'll try to make that smooth, but as easy as we can make it for both buyer and seller, a buyer schedule the showing, you'll know about it. You accept it, say, yep. Okay. We can do three o'clock. We'll be out. What I don't want to happen is, you know, you accept the showing for 11 and then later that day there's a three. Okay. I got to be out at 11 and three. Then one comes in for right. 1230. You're like coming and going from your house multiple times a day. We're just trying to be cognizant of in a hot market. It could be back to back to back to back to back. So we're just making sure that our sellers know you might want to book. You might want to just say, 
the second that you leave for work, leave your house in show ready condition. Really try to do as best you can. I get it with kids and pets and stuff. Yeah, life happens. Busy, busy days. Um, leave it in show ready condition. So then the lights are all on. You leave and lock the door. A buyer could come anytime between nine and five. And let's do that all week or set number of days per week such that someone's going to buy your home this week and make an offer. Um, and we just can't, we, we don't want to, we want to remove any hurdles that could prevent them from, and people's schedules are all over the place. So, you know, generally it's in the evenings are when people are most free or the weekends. So weekends also, because right, we have a big second home market. We have a, mm -hmm. a market that, you know, folks that buy second homes, but also investment properties or, um, are thinking of moving here for a better way of life and just calm, like chill. Um, so they can't get here till that Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So we want to make sure that we encompass our showing schedule to have the weekend involved somehow. Um, so, you know, we're asking people to leave for an extended period of time or, you know, figure out something open house hour and a half, two hours, then it opens a window where multiple people can come and keep in mind, I know I'm getting long winded, but keep in mind that then that also as these showings are happening, people are seeing, oh, that's booked then, that's booked then. Oh, geez, like, this is pretty busy. This is a popular one. Same with an open house. If I'm coming to a showing, someone else is already in the house. Oh, someone else is interested. Like, again, back to psychological. People want what they can't have. Right. That kind of boosts that. Oh, we better make a decision, you know, and then you get that call from the other realtor. Is there anything special your seller would like to see with an offer? Because we're pretty interested. Well, yeah, because they just saw. Someone was there when they were coming in and someone was in yeah. the door, in the driveway when they were leaving. This is a busy one and uh, you can take it from there. Yeah. It creates competition and, and scarcity. Yeah. People realize right. there's a lot right. of people looking at it. Exactly. Um, all right. So house has been shown. Lots of people have seen it. Offers yep. come in. You're going to review those offers and then what? Yeah. So all offers are to be presented legally uh, or you're required to present by the main real estate commission, all offers received uh, to a seller. So you go over those with uh, a client. If they're traveling or just, you know, can't meet in person, they can be all sent and you can walk through them. Um, so these are received, printed off, how, what have you. Um, we like to do face-to-face -to -face too. Um, so we may, multiple offers have a table to then show them visually, right? These, you know, four to five page purchase and sale agreements. Let's just net it down to like the terms that are important and go from there and then walk through like, here's your options, accept, reject, counter, accept, reject, counter multiples do we want to go back to two to three of these people to say give us your highest and best if you haven't already by noon tomorrow congrats you're in the running uh, we're just having a tough time deciding let all the others know by a phone call we're a big proponent of that because we would expect the same um on our end is there any sure. feedback you could give us you know your buyer would made a nice offer just need to be a little bit higher in price or we liked all the terms except inspection you know uh, financing um, and go from there. So the seller then has the option, right? We can only accept one offer. So we've got to pick one. The others can be then in backup. So we want to deliver that message in this market. A, a deal could fall through. They happen, happens yep. all the time. Um, and it's, it, you know, you want to bulletproof that transaction yet. People are people. Properties are different. Maybe another property comes on and, um, at the same time, right. Having that insurance that rather than go back out to the market, we have buyer one, is going to buy unless something comes up on inspection appraisal sure. or they get hurt, lose their job, et cetera. Buyer number two is in backup first position. They've, we've agreed to their terms as well. However, it, they're like fight with a right of first refusal. If buyer number one doesn't perform, it reverts to buyer number two rather than going back on the market. So it just creates an insurance piece where it's like, we don't have to go back and then go, yeah, you know, over. 50 people back through the home. At the same time, right, we have to do some explaining. Well, why did buyer number one wa walk away? Why didn't it work out? Um, and if there's a disclosure-related item subject to, right, from the inspection, well, we have to update that disclosure and provide it to buyer number two to make sure they're aware. Um, but we want to continue to market the property so that we get our clients the best terms and price uh, in this market. Excellent. So work through all that. You've got the right offer. Boom, you're under contract. Congratulations. And now the process is really the same mm -hmm. as it was for the buyer side. Difference is the seller's now just kind of like riding along, waiting for information. What's that period of time? Yeah. Like? So the seller really can relax quite a bit. Um, it's really the buyer has to perform and do all of the uh, paperwork for the lender or even in a cash sale, just kind of sit back, but provide more information. Title search um, is performed in that you know next couple of weeks. 
Um, but the seller's really just waiting on that appraisal, make sure that the value comes in or there's, you know, it's an as is, so we're not having to do work to the home to get it to a value. Um, and then um, really it's just playing that waiting game. There's some title paperwork that would come from a title attorney that says, right, we need to call in, um, we need your authorization to speak to your lender so we can get the payoff amount. Mm -hmm. They're calling the town, they're calling the utilities, uh, mainly the water and plumbing. Um, so the water district, because it's a lienable item, to make sure that they get a water, like a finer water um, bill payout um, so that it's not, there's not a lien that carries with the property. So we need to zero out everything as they say so that the seller then can move on to their next, you know, their new world. Um, and the buyer's taking this on at zero, ground zero. Yeah, nice yeah. and clean. Okay, yeah. so kind of hopefully that process goes smooth. All the title work comes back clean. The inspection's no big deal. Appraisal comes in good. Mm -hmm. And then off to the closing table again. That's right. Uh, back to the closing. So the seller is obviously to clean out their property, leave it in broom clean condition, free and clear of all debris. And uh, they're bringing the keys to closing, garage door openers, et cetera. Um, you know, maybe leaving a note or um, their information, mail forwarding. It's, there's some hiccups along the way that just making sure that uh, you know, if you're expecting something in the mail, you hold it at the post office or leave a forwarding or get the um, other parties a contact information so you can just check back in like, hey, something come in the mail or you might be receiving X, Y, and Z. I just want to just double check. Um, if you're local, it's a little bit easier. If you're from afar, um, sometimes, you know, but again, we know that, uh, you know, people start to receive stuff. They probably would reach out. So the brokers know to talk, Hey, something just came in. And, um, I think this is for your client probably is important. Take a picture. Yeah. Send that. Can you, we'll, just, we'll give you some money to ship it. And, um, so we've done that a handful of times too. And you're on to your next adventure. It's on to the next one. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. You've sold your home. Uh, perhaps you're also buying another one. So we've been able to tee that up so that the timing is the sale and the purchase happens in the same day or give or take a few days. Um, you can send, stay in an extended stay hotel for a couple of days if you, you know, time up like a sale on a Thursday, Friday, but you can't purchase till Monday. Um, but more often than not, you know, the wires from the sale of uh, your home can be applied to the purchase of the next and we can time up those uh, sales so that you're not moving twice. You're not without a home. Um, you're not having to unpack pack multiple times. Yep. Makes sense. So we came at you with a lot today The you know, the, we've done this obviously hundreds of times and, and yeah. certainly can walk through the process easily. But if, if you have questions about your situation or you want to talk to somebody to go into some more detail about what Jeff was talking about, you can always find us at uh, jeffsellsmain.com. You can always call in at 207-553-2605. Um, and we're looking forward to the show next week. We'll dive into the state of the market. If you want to know what the conditions of the market are like, what we're seeing on the street every day, um, we'll be able to share that with you, bring in a lending partner and give you a really good glimpse behind the scenes. Yeah. And, and another big thing too is, you know, people are always wondering what their home value is worth. We have um, a new widget on our website, jeffsellsmain.com, where you can get an estimated value. And, uh, you know, not every property gets it accurate, although sure. I've been just They're amazed at how unbelievable you know, we've been testing it. Yep. We've had a number of clients that have heard us on the radio, followed our podcasts here, the main real estate show, and uh, just continue to check that out. It's a work in progress, yet a number of folks have come to that saying like, oh my God, this is spot on yep. um, and anything we can do to help out. So again, go to jeffsellsmain.com to check out your home's value. Um, you really only have to enter like a phone and an email and uh, that way we you know, basically leave you alone. But at the same time, you know, you have your instant value. Um, we do have a cash offer um, and a CMA opportunity. So comparative market analysis that allows you to see, you know, what's my home worth at this point in time. And again, it's forever changing, but at least that gets the ball rolling. And as always, you know, if you want to go online, look for your home value or reach out to us with questions, your conversations are always confidential, no obligation. Um, if it works for you, happy to move forward. If it doesn't, also happy to follow up and find when it does. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks again for uh, joining us on the main real estate show. You can follow us again on the mainrealestateshow.com and wherever you download your podcast. Have a great one. Thank you.